I put out a tweet, short and simple. Reply to this tweet with the cover of a movie, and the one that has the most likes after 24 hours will be a movie I review. It was a close bout, but alas, there can only be one. Thank you, Nick is Not Green, for using your creator privilege for evil. Nearly six years. Six oh so peaceful years where I avoided watching this movie because I thought it would be bad. I was right. You know that. You knew that. Who didn't know that? Who didn't think this movie would be bad? I mean, they showed you the name in the trailers, right? Did they show the trailer where they tried the Slenderman angle with stock photos? What is this, a dare ad? Did anybody read the tagline on the cover? The evil behind the most unspeakable acts has a name. That sick son of a bitch. <laughs> This is one of the worst mainstream horror movies I've seen in the past decade. After watching it, I was left with like a, a Ouija taste in my mouth, which is basically just another really bad horror movie that also has this fucking guy too. Funny enough, I had watched Ralph the Movie Maker's review on this movie in the past. Great video, he shit all over it. And it still surprised me how bad it was. He didn't even touch on like 50% of the movie and I don't blame him. This shit sucks. <laughs> it's so bad. If I were to write a full script about everything I dislike about this movie, this would be the longest video on my channel hands down. But the problem is, is, is that it wouldn't be fun to make. This movie doesn't deserve my energy. Imagine I did do that. I'd be on my deathbed thinking, you know those 30 hours that I dedicated to a, a pee pee poo poo ass? Yeah, I'd probably take those back right about now. I recorded a live commentary for this video, and unlike other reviews, you're gonna see a lot of the live commentary, a lot of my genuine reactions, because I could not shut the fuck up during my watch. So present day me is really just here to guide you. Hold my hand, and I hope you enjoy. Uh, uh, hello, and welcome to the live commentary of, uh, let me get this right, The Bye Bye Man. <laughs> what year? Where's my mouse? Oh no, the byline man is already taking it. Hey guys, this video is sponsored by. Too expensive, leave me pensive with transactions But then DLD took action Affordable gold, that's real, no cap And financial rules, no more, no taxing Got the bulls panning on, John Paxson Now where'd you get that tennis necklace With that white gold in it? Who's asking? ASAP Wiz, Bieber, Ross If you collapse to mention, get an ASAP With 33% off, while I got you guys At attention, they saw the chain Thought I was flexing, but I blind eyes without Blowing a pension, Shy town pendant Jordan got ice in his veins, I got mine on my neck And I reppin' Dang! Click your looks and get 33% off your GLD order. Click my link in the description box. And thank you, GLD, for sponsoring this video. We start with a flashback. Emphasis on the flash. Jesus. This is Larry. This is Jane. This is the Bye Bye Man. Hey, you see how that one doesn't sound natural? <laughs> how did they agree to this name? The opening scene to this movie looks like another movie that tried to rip this movie off. Like, you know the Amityville, Yorona, Paranormal Curse movies that are just literally nothing? Those movies look and act like this. Larry's a big angry boy because people are saying the name of the Bye Bye Man. And as you should know by now, don't think it, don't say it. The Golden Rules. Jane's the mask, get this, has thought it and said it. To this guy, he can't walk. <laughs> <laughs> so Larry, already being haunted by the BBM. Yeah, sometimes I call him Big B. We're cool like that. He does the responsible thing of making sure nobody else gets haunted by him. So he begins to murder everyone that has heard the name. To stop the cycle, to protect future generations. It's noble. Madison, Wisconsin, October 20th, 1969. Yo, shout out Madison, Wisconsin. I don't think that's how a shotgun blast works. You hit her? You didn't move from the doorway? You stupid bitch! What? 
She closed it. Like, hey, I'm going to do the smart thing and get away from you. Why would you stand behind the door? He took like six seconds to shoot. Giselle. I told Giselle. It sounds like they're stalling. Like they're waiting for something. You don't see the man with the fucking shotgun half his size at the window, guys? Giselle! Guys, run. Guys. Who did you tell? He stood by the open door! Don't think. Don't say. They're not even running. Don't say. Bro, I am not Don't an think. athlete. Don't say. I will run fucking 40s around you guys. By the way, this looks like fucking March in Wisconsin, but. <laughs> They didn't lock the door. Are the women dumb because it's the 60s? Hmm? Is that what the movie's trying to imply? Because I don't appreciate it. They're like, ah, they could barely vote. They can't escape killers. We then get our coveted title screen. What did the train have to do with that? Actual main character time. We got Elliot and we got John. Isn't John Elliot one of the predators from To Catch a Predator? It doesn't matter. Yeah, what were you gonna do? That was just oral. And we got Sasha, Elliot's girlfriend. There's like absolutely nothing to miss here. They are young people. They like to suck and drink shitty beer. They move into an old home that's spooky, doesn't matter. The interactions written in for them are bizarre. Like John goes to the John. <laughs> And there's wallpaper of a fisherman getting a Glocky Globby 900 from a fish, which obviously is like so fucking dope, dude. Like all the company that we're gonna have over are absolutely gonna shit their asses when they see this super fucking sick cartoon bestiality in our bathroom. John calls the gang in here to come look at it. That's how sick it is. And these are the interactions that proceed. You can't get this in the dorms, right? Now that's, that's classic. John, you really think Sasha wants to see that or that? Let's quick zip up. I've definitely seen bigger. See? You were awesome. <laughs> Bro. She's awesome, man. What? Yeah, she's sick, dude. She said she's seen fatter cocks than that. <laughs> I mean, that's a fat cock. See? You were awesome. Oh, yeah. You guys must have been hilarious when you were young. Must have been. Hard. <laughs> Tier one. Hey, he made me look smart and I made him look ugly. <laughs> but after the crash, he took care of me. Talk shit about my boys, folks. You're done. Okay. Oh my God. This is literally so fucking shit. I told him, right? But I never cooked you my butter pasta next. What was that? Butter pasta next. Want to run that one one more time? Butter pasta next. <laughs> Yo, what does this do? Yeah, you could. What awkward line delivery. It's like they didn't actually have the conversation. This is perfect. Oh, easy. You all right? Yeah. Yeah, Thanks. put a finger in her ass, why don't you? What the fuck is, what is this? Oh, you okay? I see a boy's girl and he's there, which shouldn't matter, but he is there. Hey, I like this. What, the fucking mold soaring through your lungs right now? <laughs> yeah. What was that close up? <laughs> I am in all right now. <laughs> How much time have I watched? 11 minutes. I'm 11 minutes in. Elliot's a softie, so he writes Sasha letters. They uncomfortably sit together. They have a bead door that they installed, by the way. No animals were harmed in the making of this card. I just love when he writes me poetry with kidnapper aesthetic. Hey, Elliot, that's not funny. I'm pretty sure you would have heard the beads because you have a fucking bead door. <laughs> Thanks for absolutely launching that gain in my ears from that bead door. Elliot's got a brother named Virgil. He's a pure Christian man who's got a family, so he can still drink shitty beer, but his socket in fucking days are over. Virgil's got a daughter who seems like she's just here to fill like some weird child quota for the movie. Also something to note, Elliot is pretty cool with John and Sasha being pretty close. Oh, did you think I meant like friends who play foosball together? No. I mean, he could just dunk his dick deep in her trunky mid dance floor cause <laughs> he's my boy and <laughs> that's my gal. What's the worst I do? 
Um, put some water in that fucking cup? That's the most disrespectful thing this movie's done. Also, no one's taking care of the child at this fucking frat party. There's another young woman named Kim who was in Sasha's lit class. She's a psychic or something. I don't know. Maybe she's just on TikTok a lot. Kim, she's in my lit class. Girls who wear hats inside are crazy. You know that, right? You have a bead door. Little girl finds a coin. It drops. This matters. So we can do this scene. I thought she said she put it on top of the drawer. Uh, it's so weird. It's on the floor now. It's a shitty drawer, my guy. Oh, is that white? Is that why that's there? Don't think it. Don't say it. Don't think it. Don't say it. Don't think it, don't say it. I think you can stop think spitting it, it now. <laughs> We're young people who drink, so we go outside and play unorthodox games. Psychic. Sensitive. And we let this girl, who's probably a Libra, make our furniture smell. You are psychic. Sensitive there for sure. <laughs> Careful spitting out that air. Bruh. Uh, quite the jam-packed night, guys. A little Nerf football baseball, a little sage cleansing, summoning Baphomet. Your grandmother has some biscuits or, or rolls or something. Gams rolls? <laughs> Gam Gam? <laughs> Low Gammy Guga? <laughs> Elliot doesn't trust this woman's claims, rightfully so, so he leaves the room, hides his keys, and then challenges her. what I hide? Where'd I hide it? Oh, come on. Mom, Elliot. It's crazy. Shh. She's not a dog, bucko. She said she's sensitive as a psychic. All right, sniff it out, boy. <laughs> you put the keys in a pot on the stove. Did you? <laughs> Get fucked, loser. Mm. Love you. Love you, John. What? Hey, you're joking, right? Sasha, you're kidding, right? She's asleep. I don't know if you could tell. So John has erectile dysfunction because of the bye-bye man. I'm not joking. He tried fucking the psychic girl, but all he was doing was like, was like this. Like pretend my face is a vagina and this is a... What? Nothing. Why would you not tell the fucking demonologist Miss Cleo, that you just hallucinated maggots on her. I feel like she'd be able to help guide you there, as opposed to, like, anybody else in this movie. So naturally, John takes this moment of a libido void to say this to Sasha. So you are clean and beautiful. That's nice. Neither of you think that's fucking weird? There's no addressing of that? Just John on his off day. So Sasha even starts to hallucinate John trying to fuck her. The bye-bye man just wants to watch them all fuck each other. I don't know. This is how his name's actually spelled. A two-pack of ass. Hey, speaking of weird-ass transitions. <laughs> what is happening? Is it Sasha? Yeah, she's she's been really sick and scared. And daydreaming about fucking my best friend. John's also been semi-sexually harassing my girlfriend too. This movie doesn't even have like cheap jump scares. Like it's bad and you would think it'd be littered with fucking just obnoxious jump scares. But it doesn't even have that. I mean, granted, I'm only 37 minutes into the movie, a third of the way. And apparently, there's a dog. I just don't understand. You know, in situations like this, you don't need to pick up the coin. If you see there's a coin on the floor, you look at the floor and you're like, how'd that coin get there? Because of things, Elliot accuses his roommates of fucking doggy style. <laughs> it lacks a lot of motivation, so it's very unnatural. Gross. What happened, huh? And there were sounds. I mean, come on. What does the scratch marks and ghost dog have to do with your friends having intercourse? No, no, don't touch her. What? Man. Don't touch her. You are a crazy paranoid, bro. Snap him in the face, then! You've been waiting too long! He's already been pushing the boundaries! You should have snuffed him years ago! When you were fucking little shitheads on the football field, he probably was already trying you! Ghost Dog has nothing to do with this! See, they're trying to do this thing 
where Demon Ghost House is making them feel like there's this weird love triangle thing here, right? Where John is starting to think that he wants to fuck the girl, right? Which he probably already wanted to anyways. The girl is thinking that, oh, John wants to hit on me. John wants to fuck me. But the main I don't know his fucking name. This guy... It's so unjustified. He didn't care at all when he came up to her and he was like, you're fucking beautiful and perfect. It was only just him randomly talking to his brother and being like, I don't know, actually, now that I think about it, him dancing with her is kind of weird. But at the party, he was super fucking cool with it. It is good. His brother even pointed it out. Hey, man, I'm so glad you're like super confident in your relationship and you can let your girl do that. And he was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah we're boys. He would never do me dirty like that. And then now he just does. What are the chances of that? There is no fucking way this got a theatrical release and people paid money to see this. What the fuck was that wallpaper animorph shit I just saw? My cousin Rachel and I can become dogs. Now I'm an animorph. Was that a transition shot? Or was that supposed to scare me? Or was it both? Oh my god. What is this now? What is it? Is this animation from The Lion King 2? Oh, shit! Man, I have to see what the budget was for this. 6.2 to 7.4 million made 29.9 million at the box office. Dear God. 37 Oakdale. Oh yeah, the two handsome guys. This is like Walter White based out of San Francisco. Every single atom from this wall, except for that- How do the photos of the dog that have been edited still look bad. You could Photoshop that to your leisure and have this shitty old school filter cover up the blemishes and the dog still looks bad. So yeah, they continue to get haunted in different ways. Elliot does the classic library deep dive that has the exact documents he needs and explains everything. The whole don't think it, don't say it thing starts to dawn on Elliot because he realizes the more he does, the closer the bye-bye man gets. He Redman took a shotgun and murdered eight friends and family members right here in Madison. We remember the story. Shut the door and lock the door. And lock the door! <laughs> That's them realizing that they can't make that look any kind of good whatsoever. They can get away with the shitty shots on the body that look bad as is. That, oh my God, the CGI blood is so bad. But they're like, no, head exploding? No, can't fucking do. We got a tight deadline of two weeks to make this movie. But yet they still believe in the dog. What the dog doing? He didn't eat a dog. Could have just been him. He didn't need the dog. Well, lad, you're eating all the juicy bits. Let me have a bite and I'll give you some of my cheese. You won't win. to write poison in bold letters on the back. We get it. It's fucking Drano. You can't drink it. How stupid do you think we are? That was really bad. By the way, I'm sorry if this seems all over the place. Um, in all fairness to me, so is the movie. You can't help thinking about him. And the more you think about him, the closer he gets. Okay, so that's what it is. So it's not one and done. It's if you keep up with it. We're here, thanks. Like a coin rolling. Yeah, like a train. Like a train? The word spreads and he comes to you with, with that thing. It's a dog. What can you do with cancer but cut it out? You have to stop it before it spreads and every cell dies. Are you planning on murdering everybody? I'm so confused. Kim sees a family in a car accident that she's somehow going to help with her nursing experience that she doesn't have, but this isn't real. The Bye Bye Man makes you see and hear things. I'm sure this is news to the person who just had a powwow with Elliot about it in the car. Jim, wait. Why do you Jim. have this hammer? Jim. Well, at least she finally got the hammer she was looking for. Hey, oh, come on, John, you limp dick bastard. <laughs> I love that because they have the train passing. They could be like, we can use every cut we got. Go ahead, different over here. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh my goodness. 
the? So at the scene of the crime, Elliot has to be the crazy one and tell them what's happening. And obviously John sucks, so he doesn't believe him. Matrix Lady is a detective who abuses her power to threaten these traumatized kids. John, please, please don't say it. Don't say what? Also Sasha. don't think it. I think that's important to clarify at this point. Sasha, what doesn't he want you to say? Yes, yeah, Sasha. You, shut it! Does he just think everyone wants to fuck him? Is that his curse? Cause like on the scale of curses. It's not a bad curse to have. I am starting to get bored. Oh, let's fucking go. Finally some content. Nothing like a nice dose of John ass. So Elliot finally catches John absolutely obliterating Sasha's scapula. But he's hallucinating. He still doesn't understand that yet. So in reaction, he swings a bat at John's head and hits him. Like, with the bat that he swung. <laughs> and, uh... What are you doing, Elliot? Uh, what's, what's wrong with you, Elliot? He treated it like it was a monk. He just Sammy sosa your temple. Fuck, he's not gonna get us. He's not gonna get us. I'm sorry, but... I'm sorry. Wait, I'm now sorry. he's woozy? He reacted right away! He got fucking swung on! And he was like, man, what the heck, dude? Why would you do that? It took him like 30 seconds to be like, oh shit, you actually... Just gave me nine concussions. Right after that, Elliot understands the whole illusion thing finally, and also visits sweater vest murderer guy's wife because she never heard the name back in the day, so the sweater vest didn't kill her. And Elliot thinks he can get some wisdom from her. Nothing like casually breaking into a mansion. Leave. <laughs> October 20th, 1969. The day my life went turn, turn, turn. My life got flipped, turned upside down, and I'd like to take a minute, just sit right there and say, Yo, bus, 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 uh, uh, Madison, Wisconsin, October 26th, 2016. There's no way that anybody has taken this seriously. Jesus. Don't you say it. Your husband spared you, and he got me. He's in me now. He's in my friends. And she tells him to kill all his friends and then off himself. Yeah, how original. Elliot obviously doesn't want to do that, so he leaves. But he still takes the gun when he knows he's been actively manipulated to commit violent acts. No, you're not real. Is he just smiling? Ha! I knew it. Why was she real? Does it make any sense? Why is she out in the middle of the road? Did he put her there so he can just fuck with Elliot's mind more? Like, okay, you actually killed someone, dickhead. How are you sitting at the tree? You just got obliterated. Okay, I'm ready. He just rode off her death as, all right, you want to throw a little bamboozle my way? All right, we can fucking play prank wars, baby. I'm Sal from Impractical Jokers, just fucking go. You looking at the camera? This guy slowly died in his room. <laughs> his brain's fucking mush. Sasha and John awake and they're both hallucinating. So they have a back and forth thing. It doesn't matter. Oh, Elliot, come on. I'm here, John. So it's not even really so much don't think it, don't say it, because apparently the Bye Bye Man gets closer with there. It's if you fall into the illusion or give in to the mind tricks, because they haven't said it and they've both been knocked out. One of them knocked out unconscious, one of them asleep, so they haven't had the chance to think about it or say it. So it has nothing to do with that. The whole tagline that you're going off of is pointless. And it's not really the main contributing factor to fucking dying by the Bye Bye Man! Elliot rushes into a scuffle and ends up stabbing John. I mean, he was gonna die from CT in like eight minutes. <laughs> oh, okay. No, she would have been fine. Yeah, no, you fucked up. So in that little scuffle that was off screen, she managed to take the scissors from him and overpower the person whose only characteristic was an athlete. Right. Quit to the B door. Don't do it, evil Clifford. Please. My friends are friends, not food. Oh, no. The 
the trench coat that nobody wears. Is that the high? I, I, I mean the bye bye man. The hello hello sir. The guten tag guten tag fellow. The how you doing how you doing lad. Today, Junior! Virgil shows up for some reason with the child, and Elliot doesn't want to infect them because he's a good boy. So there's obviously a dilemma. Virgil also let the child go run off and pee. You, you don't want to lock the door? What's with people in this movie not wanting to lock doors? If the Bye Bye Man's goal is to continue spreading the curse, why even kill the la like two of the last three people that knew about it? Why would he not keep them alive and manipulate them to tell as many people as possible so he can grow big and strong and have all these people to eat and murder? Why leave it on one person at this point? That doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, try and get like a good ratio going, you know what I'm saying? I just think it's bad business. Oh, what are you gonna do if I shoot myself, Mr. BBM? Honestly, it's kind of good that Ralph really didn't mention that many things about the movie. He just kind of complained about some of the things he found an issue with. Because this is still kind of like a new movie to me, you know, because like, I, I've never seen it. I didn't know he was gonna off himself. I really didn't. Find your daughter, you dumb fuck! And then we get more of Virgil and Child. It kind of saves me a few bucks on the cremation, but th th that's neither here nor there. Get in the car. So this boy ran the librarian over, mutilated and murdered her children, and then killed his roommates and himself, and you had him in custody today, but you let him go? Who are you? Just some fucking so bum rent a cop talking to a detective like that? She's the one that has the important trench coat and can be in like semi-casual clothing. You're in a cop outfit. What's the order of command here? say goodbye. Bye, man. Oh, that was weird. Why did I say that? <laughs> At least he gave me the coins. Oh, what are you talking about? He must have left them out there for me to find. Left them out where, honey? In the little table. Outside next to the trash cans. Yeah, when something's by trash, he didn't put it there for you. What did this writing say? You know I can't read in the dark. What do you think I am, a flashlight? <laughs> She's adorable. I can't, I can't morally make fun of her. She's oh. precious. Wait, 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 he's trying to say something. Hey, he's trying to ahead. breathe. Cool, man. How did you know just... from six feet out he was trying to say words? He's struggling to breathe. He has been stabbed Please. and he is a burn victim. Please. Why are the paramedics not doing anything? What the fuck are you talking about? Why are you looking at the camera? No! This movie made back so much money and it is debatably like one of the worst mainstream horror movies that I've seen in the past five years. I'm not talking about your little shitty B movies on Netflix. I'm talking about something that was in a theater that had money behind it and that made money. This movie is laughably bad it is flawed at every corner the acting is bad the editing is bad the dialogue is horrendous this story doesn't even really make sense it is cheesy and corny and worst of all it's not even kind of scary you don't even give the thrill seekers like shitty jump scares because some people just want that you didn't give them dread you didn't give them suspense can not give them something to worry about once they turn off the movie when they're in their home alone? It is a joke of a movie. I am astonished that anybody on this planet thinks this movie is even decent. That is fucking incredible. That's all I have to say about this movie for now. I'm gonna sign off on this live commentary. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Here is your second reminder to please leave a like. Please subscribe because I have more content coming your way. Shout out to my beautiful patrons for always supporting the boy. Good news, I actually have some merchandise coming out soon. Don't tell anybody though, it's a secret. And as always, I am Mr. Gigi and I am out. Bye.